Ladies and gentlemen, Cindy Olin is about to come on and rock your world, helping you to create love that lasts. And we're going to dive into a really powerful conversation, attracting that dream partner and really stepping into the romance and life that you deserve. So stick around. Before that, I acknowledge you for being and becoming your greatest possible self. Thank you for showing up here today and for everything that you do, every step, every habit, every uh, activity that you do that takes the next step. I acknowledge that. I see you. Keep showing up. Next up is our iTunes review of the week, and let's see who it's by this week. I believe it's by Dom Brightman, who says, let's put that up on the screen. It says, a spirit bomb of good life changing and empowering content. Chris has a great podcast that has curated some of Earth's most inspiring humans that deliver value. It's great when the host has energy and the guests also bring their A game. Give this a listen or over 9,000 listens. Thank you so much, Dom. I appreciate you, brother. And uh, if you want to give us a review, go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes or search greatest possible self on the Apple Podcast Store and you can give us a review there. Thank you in advance for doing that. I'm going to introduce Cindy in just a second. Before that, Grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes. This is going to be a powerful freaking interview. This woman is just on fire and uh, it's going to be great. So make sure you stick around all the way through to the end because we're going to be teaching you how to have this, this relationship with a man so he listens when you're communicating with him. And I, I think I could probably learn a thing or two about this uh, to, to be able to communicate more effectively with my woman. So men or women, stick around. Cindy has been studying love and relationships for as long as she can remember. She was always the girl that everyone came to, helping friends get dressed for dates. She also had a passion for and background in fashion and being asked for advice on what to say and do. Growing up as an only child, Cindy also always wanted to understand men. She often jokes that she used to wear man repellent. Her journey with learning to understand men and relationships has helped her in guiding others to do the same. After college, Cindy worked with a relationship development center studying Mars and Venus philosophies and facilitating workshops to help women develop a deeper understanding of men so they could create fulfilling relationships. As a former high-end matchmaker, Cindy has coached and worked with hundreds of people, men and women, to find their happily ever after. And we're going to be diving into such a powerful interview. Cindy, are you ready to rock the house, Superwoman? I am so ready. Boom, shaka laka. We are live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Cindy, we are about to just tear this place up in such a great way. And uh, let's, let's dive right into the theme of today, which is attracting your dream partner. What does that mean for you, Cindy? Well, <laughs> that's a loaded question. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, what it means by attracting your dream partner First is knowing what it is you want yeah. in a partnership. Uh, that's number one. I think so often we we spend more time planning our next vacation or, mm-hmm. you know, spend more time analyzing what our the big the next big screen TV is and mm-hmm. how it'll look good in our house than <laughs> spending time on what my values are, what's really, really important to me. Because then once you have a clearer understanding of that, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, then it becomes so much easier to actually receive that partnership and and recognize it, quite frankly. I love it. I love it. So attracting, <laughs> manifesting that dream partner, it, you got to know what you're looking for to be able yeah. to notice if it shows up right in front of your face and, you know, like lands right in front of your lap. Because oftentimes we'll spend so much time on the trivial things rather than investing the time, the energy, the money up front to like get that clarity so that we can really create our dream life instead of wandering around, have a clear plan of action and, and direction that we want to go. And that'll create so much more happiness and fulfillment in our lives. Absolutely. And, you know, something that I work with my clients around is, um, I I call it your fabulous five, your five non-negotiables and, you know, what it is you want. So it, it works as their roadmap. And, Mm -hmm. you know, every time I connect with my clients, well, okay, how was your day? Did, you know, does he have your five? Yeah. And, you know, there's ways of actually uncovering whether or not someone possesses those qualities early on. Mm. And, you know, there's always this, you know, barometer, too, of, you know, looking at 
what you're looking for. Let's just say you're a super positive person Mm -hmm. and he's positive too, but maybe you're a 10 on the scale and he's a three. So that may not be, that may not work. Right. Right. So, and some of those things take a little bit of time. Yeah, this is this is gold. I love it. Non-negotiables. We'll dive into how to do those things in a bit. But for yep. everyone who's just getting connected with you, Cindy, why don't you share a little bit more about how you're serving your clients today, creating creating luck in love? What does what does that mean? And tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, thank you for asking that question. Um, you know, not only do we get really clear, I come up with an action plan. Mm. for my clients and you know we do an action plan that's actually custom tailored to each person um so that could look like online dating that could look like if you're already in a relationship um you know how to create a deeper connection so i teach a uh i teach a formula called attract connect commit Mm. and you know there's we first start off with, let's just say you're single and you want to meet that man and you want to manifest lasting love. So then we work on the attract, Mm -hmm. right? So it first starts off with what is it that you want getting really clear there. And then we put together a plan and we work on your way of being because so often today as women, we're busy professionals. We're in our masculine a lot. And, you know, how to really harness that feminine and that energy so that you're inviting in a man and a man can see where he actually can add value to your life. Because, and and I do educational pieces on, you know, helping women understand men, how they think differently and how they show up differently in dating and how sometimes a woman might think, oh, he's he's much deeper in than I am when he's not (laughs) and, and to really help them with the process of what falling in love looks like for Mm. a man. Um, So, you know, it's, it's a combination, right. Of, of that action piece and the, the educational and, And we work with a, you know, with another component, which is a visualization piece, which I call the manifestation plan. Um, I love it. So, yeah, it's, and it's great. You know, we do, um, you know, visualization work on, um, you know, there's a couple different ways to do it, but I'll, I'll just talk, I'll talk about one for our purposes today. It's, You know, visualizing a scene with your beloved. Mm-hmm. So whether that's, you know, when he walks in your your door in the evening and he comes and he wraps his arms around your waist and gives you a kiss on the cheek. Um, or it's or it's maybe, you know, you two are walking on the beach, right? And and enjoying. So feeling that feeling. And envisioning that together. And don't worry about it. You don't need to have a face or anything like that. I think a lot of people get concerned about that. It's it's really feeling that that feeling. Mm. And I I do some meditations that I share with my clients around actually removing blocks mm. that are standing in the way of fully receiving mm. um, the love that that they desire. So, so that's so powerful because yeah, like it's, the it's energetic- really powerful work. And, yeah. and, and so, you know, in that attraction phase, oh, we do so much, you know, it's because the number one way to attract your dream partner mm-hmm. is to have a dreamy relationship with yourself. Yeah. And and it, it all starts with you because if you're co- consistently beating yourself up and you know this, Chris, I mean, we have over 90,000 thoughts per day on average, the average person has 70,000 negative thoughts wow. and, and it's fed in through the media. It's fed in through, um, you know, social media, it's fed in everywhere. Yep. 
So, so how can you combat that? How can you shift that? It's actually having the, um, being really conscious and present within yourself and noticing when that comes up, noticing when your fear comes up, noticing when, and, and granted, it's not always easy, but when you start, you know, feeling that, oh, I had that negative feeling again, I walked past a mirror and I thought my butt looked too big or whatever, um, then you feel it and say, oh, thanks for showing up. Bye-bye. Yeah. And my man, my beloved, myself, I love me anyway. Mm. And, you know, so it comes up with, with anything, yeah. right? It could be, it's even having the, the right attitude of, of inviting in love when you're searching online yeah. or walking out your door. I mean, I have so many clients that will utilize you know, certain things that I coach them to do, like, you know, you're, you're in Whole Foods, you're walking around with a smile on your face, like you've got the biggest, best secret yep. and you're kind of laughing yep. and people that's contagious. It's radiant. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's so, awesome. I love it. I love the the manifestation plan. Um, I love the process of what falling in love looks like. Uh, for me, like I always visualize me and my girlfriend Petia um, before I met her, right? My dream woman when I was calling her in, I said, we're on the like cliffs of Croatia or somewhere in the Mediterranean yeah. at a table, like romantic dinner overlooking the ocean, just like total, total bliss, total, just like pure peace and, and just love, you know, gushing through us. It's, it, it, but that energy was the most important part. Mm -hmm. I had pictures of like, oh, she's wearing a white dress and she might look like this or her figure, things like that. Mm -hmm. And like, ultimately it was about the energy. And so to get reconnected with our energy, I think is what I was going to say earlier. Like, it's so important to have access to that and to do the inner work to unblock ourselves, to release and, and allow that energy to be mobilized. Because I think yeah. so many people are are not even like have not allowed or given themselves permission, especially women, I think, have not given themselves permission to feel that level of freedom, of expansion, of fulfillment. And like you said, a lot of people are in their masculine. So to get back into that like juicy flow and feminine and attracting and calling that in, I think is so, so critical. It really is. And and you know, looking at I do work with looking at your past yep. and, and everybody has patterning. I, and that's something that's one of my superpowers. <laughs> I'm really good at seeing what the patterning in is. What are your triggers? Because yeah. oftentimes we have wounding that we continue to repeat until we're really conscious of it. And we understand how to release it. Yeah. And so that is, super powerful work and there's so much freedom in that um in that transformational journey mm -hmm. and you know I'll I'll talk to sometimes even on you know on an initial call with with someone I'll be like I had no idea <laughs> um that this was going on in the background or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and it's helpful in in understanding yourself on a deeper level, not blaming yourself. Mm. And, um, you know, I think women a lot of times will take a lot of responsibility for what is going wrong in the relationship yeah. or, you know, what's not happening rather than taking your part, you know, as 50, 50. Yeah. Cause we're nurturing beings. We want to, we want to make people, we want to make everybody happy around us. And we get to have the opportunity to um, receive love and let a man make us happy too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cindy, we're going to go back into your journey. This has been awesome. I love the, the tips and what we've covered so far. And I want to get our audience connected. I mentioned it in your intro, but in your own words, tell us about like what had you become a relationship strategist and really wanting to empower women in, in creating the relationship yeah. of their dreams. Such a great question. And I could talk to you for probably an hour about this, but I'll keep it concise. Sure. Okay. So, um, you know, growing up, I, I grew up as an only child and I, I did not understand how to connect with guys, you know, how some girls, like they could just hang with the dudes. 
I was not that girl. <laughs> And, you know, I had a couple and it started to, I had a couple boys in my neighborhood when I was really, really young. We used to play all the time. It was fine. But then the change happened. You know, the change, like, I don't know, <laughs> sixth or seventh grade, I don't know, junior <laughs> high or something. And they started looking at me differently. And then all of a sudden I started to shut down yeah. and protect mm-hmm. myself. And wow. so, so that continued. And then, you know, I was always boy crazy interested in dating you know um so i would go out on dates and i would you know like go out on dates and you know after high school in my early 20s and literally i would go out on maybe one two dates and guys would run for the hills and i had no idea i was like i look cute I'm wearing perfume. I've got heels. What's going on? <laughs> and literally, I was like, "There's, there's something really wrong here." And I mean, I'm not. Nothing's in my teeth. <laughs> so, but what was interesting is that happened enough that I knew wholeheartedly that the common denominator was me. Yep. And I wasn't creating. And this is part of, you know why I'm so passionate about communication and your emotional triggers and understanding how to release those things so that you can, you know, be able to fully open up and trust and be vulnerable and in relationships. Right. Right. So I, you know, I learned I was common denominator and I, it's, you know, I started like doing the work and I was, you know, working under, coaches and experts in this field before that was even cool (laughs) people that are dinosaurs now in in my field i would you know research do everything that i could to 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 understand Mm -hmm. and um so then after college i started co-facilitating men are from mars women from venus workshops and it helped me have a deeper understanding still a hot mess um you know, it, that was my first touch point. And then it continued on from there. And, you know, I, I've studied under a lot of, a lot of um, experts in our field. And so in my field, I should say, <laughs> so what, um, you know, what transpired is then I became a matchmaker. I became a high-end matchmaker and that was so much fun. And what I found is that people have patterns and they would, you know, I'd set them up on great dates with amazing people Mm -hmm. and they would find a way to sabotage it somehow. So we started working with them on connecting with themselves Mm. and having that great relationship with them and coaching them on how not to sabotage love. And then all of a sudden people had all the the success and it inspired me to start my own company. That's Mm. the shorter version of it. And so I did. I love it. I love it. So tell us a little bit more about the principles of the company you, you mentioned attract connect co- connect commit those are important phases is there anything else about like what your company stands for that you want people to know yeah um that's a good question it's you know i am a stand you know my company itself we're you know we're a stand for women's transformation i mean men too i have worked with men so Guys, don't be scared off. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really a stand for your transformation and connecting with yourself and creating, um, you know, it, my company's named Create Your Own Luck and Love because I don't believe that luck is involved. Mm. It, I really believe that it, it starts with us mm. and, and we get to receive it. So it's all about the heart yeah. and, you know, learning how to, I stand for presence, connection, um, you know, soulful, yummy, feminine journeys, all that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. 
It's okay. great. It's great. I love it. Um, so tell us a little bit more about these phases, attract, connect, commit. Let's dive even more into the attraction phase and what mm -hmm. we can be doing to manifest, to call in, to get clarity on what it is that we want and are looking for in a significant other. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I have this, you know, there's a saying, faith without works is dead. Mm. So we can want to bring in the love of our lives and, and, you know, work on the manifestation techniques, which are amazing, by the way. Yep. Um, but we get to put that into action. Yes. Too. So I put together in the attract phase, um, you know, we might put together a really amazing online profile that attracts the kind of people that you want to be attracting, mm -hmm. more or less. I mean, you're going to have some people that slide in there that that aren't meant for you. Mm -hmm. But um, and 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 also. What's the word I'm looking for, you know, getting rid of the the people most of the people that that aren't um aligned right, right. filtering system. out yes yeah filtering out that's the word <laughs> um so in that phase you know i work a lot around um your fears the things mm -hmm. that you know maybe you're horrible at flirting so mm -hmm. we you know i I find really simple ways to flirt. Like that smile technique really works. Mm -hmm. There's another one that works even better. It's literally, you see a handsome stranger. I'm going to go back to Whole Foods again. And, and smile like it's Christmas day. Like you've got a secret, you're kind of giggling. Smile for three Mississippis, guys. And that's <laughs> hard. That's hard. Don't stop at two Mississippis. Three Mississippis, and then look away, and then look up, smile again. <laughs> Arugula or romaine? They didn't recall romaine again, did they? You know, just like have some fun. And I think that's the other thing is like really having fun. Yeah. Um, and and I work with having fun, doing activities. Mm you know, having my clients focus in on activities because then again, we do get stuck in a rut. Yeah. So if if we get out of that rut and start doing things that, you know, maybe you've always wanted to take a pole dancing class or mm. salsa, you know, do that because then it's going to create a different energy. Yeah, Happiness yeah. is contagious and men love happy women. It plus, plus stuff. like, for me, what I what I found is like the sensuality. Getting in touch with that sensuality mm -hmm. has women. If it's dancing, for example, pole dancing or you know salsa or whatever, that sensuality is important. That a woman feels connected with that sense of like self love and that feminine feminine flow energy. Because if they're you know walking around stiff and rigid and not having fun and so much in their masculine, then that's not necessarily going to be attractive towards the the man who's looking for someone who, a woman who's in their like sexy sensual feminine you know and and sexy sensual feminine could be different totally. for every woman totally so if you're a little bit sillier that's cool yeah you know it's it's you know being you and and so in this phase, I, I really focus into this is probably one of the most important phases um, they're all really important, but this phase is the foundation piece because mm -hmm. I really work with connecting with you mm -hmm. and bringing out your authenticity into the world. Yeah. Because a lot of times, you know, women, when we date, we are not authentic and <laughs> and women, you might be, you might be thinking, I'm authentic. I'm myself. Well, let's think about this. We get dressed, we put on our Spanx. We like, we are looking at our best and kind of holding everything in. And a man t on a first meeting with a woman is typically more himself and less attached mm. at that moment. Because he just he's not emotionally connected to her yet. So he's gonna say anything. He's gonna really be himself if he's, mm. you know, a little more comfortable in his own skin. Right. 
more so than after two or three or four days. Mm. So, you know, working with women on getting comfortable with authenticity and vulnerability um, and what that truly looks like. Mm. So that's, that's phase one. I could talk about that for a little bit longer, but you guys, you get the gist of that. Yeah. And so in phase one, we utilize all the time because there's always that attraction piece to keep, you know, your relationship in flow yeah. and fun. Um, so the next piece is the connect piece. So you're dating, you're connecting. I, um, you know, I really recommend dating multiple people. Um, and, and I don't mean seriously, I mean, like getting to know them. Yes. And and building a foundation as a friendship mm-hmm. before you know much else goes on, so that you can decide you know is this going to be the right person for me? And when you meet somebody that you really like, as likely you will, mm-hmm. it'll keep you not as focused in on that one person, like attached instead and of being attached, attached to this working out because this is an awesome guy or whatever, totally. like. Hey, let's let's get to know people and and make the priority. Let's build friendships. Let's build relationships before like, oh my gosh, this is the one. I gotta whatever you know, whatever comes out of that. Which is something that so often times happens. Yeah, is you know, you took the words right out of my mouth. Thank you very much. Um, Yeah, it's we're a lot less attached when we meet somebody that we like, and so that's the plan anyway. It doesn't always work out that way, but it it is the plan. And it's then you get the opportunity Mm -hmm. to look at, okay, is this, does this work? Does this not work? And the opportunity to utilize communication. So in this stage of the game, I start working deeper around the difference between how men and women communicate, how they operate in relationship, how they operate in early dating as opposed to once they're in. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of times men, just like women, will get really excited and text message you a lot and, you know, do do all the things. And <laughs> it's not sustainable yeah. for a man. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> I, I, I have I have done this before. I was like, you know, it, it's so easy to get fun and excited in the beginning. And like, after a while, it's like, okay, I, I want to be focusing on my life as well. Like, so it's it's almost like the tone I sat, set in the beginning, when that decreased, when that frequency de- decreased, it felt like there became a gap in our, our relationship, something like felt off or different, or, you know, I made it, I made it mean something, or she made it mean something or whatever it was in these past relationships. And so it's like, just to be, to remember for me, I had to remember like with Petia, my girlfriend now, like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to do the best that I can. And I also get to show up and make the effort to, to make that connection keep going. Right. It's, I can't just say, Hey, you know, it was all fun and, and lots of excitement in the beginning. How do I continue to generate and create the excitement ongoing? Like what, what can I do to be responsible for that? Yeah. I mean, that's why there's so much out there about why men pull away because Mm. it's like, I call it a roller coaster. Yeah. So in this phase, it's like, it's super exciting. You're like, tick, 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 tick. And it's all the, you know, all the buildup of what's going to happen on the other side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once it happens, your stomach drops and all of that. (laughs) And then it's like, all of a sudden the roller coaster ends and you're like, (laughs) but the same thing goes on with dating and Mm -hmm. when a man and I've seen it every single time, it doesn't matter if she's your soulmate, the love of your life. Mm -hmm. There's what I call a little bit of a letdown. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, and men settle in. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. And a lot of times women take it as this is bad. Like Mm -hmm. he's not texting me as much. He's not calling me as much. And they're triggered by that rather than looking at the whole picture of, you know, well, we're in a committed relationship now. And so he's not really working hard to win my heart over Mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. He still gets to do that. But the other thing is, is 
women we don't always look at because we do live in a pretty self-absorbed as society. Sure. Yeah. Um, so unless we're aware, we're not always looking at, and we can't see our blind spots. So we might be, you know, you might get triggered because there, that's been something that's happened before. Maybe a guy's left mm. at that point in time, mm -hmm. which sucks. So looking at that from the perspective, maybe you got really busy or had a deadline at work. Mm. Or maybe, you know, there's this and the information that you know, taking that into account without making excuses, mm. right? And there's a way for the letdown not to be as harsh. Mm. You want to hear about it? So women actually pace the relationship. Okay. Women sure. don't necessarily think that all the time, but we do. We pace the amount of time we spend together because men are hunters by nature. They'll be like, okay, let's get together tonight. How about tomorrow night? We could go do this on Friday. And it's too much too soon. So if you're spending all this time together really, really quick and it goes zero to 60, well, it's going to fall mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so whether or not it works out, zero to 60 is another topic. Like that could be a whole hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and it's easy to get excited. Yeah. So you pace it. Don't spend quite as much time as he wants you to spend mm -hmm. with him. Remember, don't cancel your Tuesday night yoga that you do religiously yep, nope. together with him. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't cancel your girls nights. Do you. Yep. And because that is so sexy to a man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the thing that actually attracts him the most besides your confidence and your authenticity. Yeah. And, you know, the more that you are of all of those, which means getting connected with you mm -hmm. and looking at some of the dark pieces that you're afraid to let someone in on. So... Yeah. No, this is great. That's, this is great. This is powerful that. stuff. I, I want to I dive into the zero to 60 because it's been in my mind a little bit. Um, in terms of relationships, I think a lot of people can create physical um, closeness and intimacy very quickly. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Is there any guidelines around that? Or Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, here's what I believe yeah. for if... I'm assuming you're looking for the love of your life. You're looking for a relationship. You're looking for something casual. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Keep swiping. Keep swiping. <laughs> uh, yeah, pay attention. So, yeah, physical intimacy. A lot of times people will say, oh, on the third date or no. Mm. Um, here's what I feel. And what I know works really well because women get attached through intimacy. Yep. It could be hugging, kissing, whatever. Men do too, but it's different for them. Okay. Um, they actually connect through the three things that I talked about earlier. Mm. And then there, there's different phases of falling in love for them. Mm -hmm. But this is the piece that women will sometimes rush into because they 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 have somewhere in their belief system that to keep a man they need to have sex with them and it's not true mm -hmm. so you want to hold off until you're in a committed relationship and you feel really really safe and comfortable and that doesn't mean you're in a committed relationship on the third date because you don't know him mm -hmm. and you want to you want to take your time. I generally say about ninety days. You know, because the first ninety days you can really take it or leave it. Yeah. With relationship within ninety days, you get to know. You see, you see a pretty pretty broad range of who this person could be. <laughs> you. Yeah. And and you know, some people don't agree with me, yeah. but I feel really strongly about that yeah. Um, yeah. because if a man really likes you and really cares about you 
he might fight you a little bit on it mm-hmm. and that's okay, but don't give in mm-hmm. because the right guy, he's not gonna, he's not gonna actually care no. how he'll be like, if you need me to wait a year, I'll wait a year. Yes. Yeah. suck, but I will. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, they will, they will, absolutely wait and that's part of pacing Mm. too so how do you set yourself up for success don't go indoors to one another's homes (laughs) i say that don't go (laughs) like you're like you're my six-year-old don't (laughs) go here Uh, why you know yeah there's a real reason why they call it Netflix and chill yep. because the bedroom's right there. You're on mm. the couch. Mm. It's, it's ripe for romance. Yep. I mean, I have a client of mine that, you know, <laughs> lives in, in an apartment or condo and she, they've, they've got, you know, like a, you know, a common area. Uh-huh. So she'll take her, she won't take her dates in her home. But, you know, they'll drop her off and and she'll sit in the, you know, the common area. Yeah. She might kiss them or do. That's you know, awesome. That's but so cool. she's not going to go there because really? she knows what happens. happens. <laughs> and usually what happens to you guys is expectations start to occur. Mm. And, mm. you know expectations are entitled. Mm. So when you look at, you know, you obviously have standards, you have things that you desire, but you don't own them because you had sex with them. He doesn't own you. No, it's, it's like looking at having that all figured out Mm. before you go there. Imagine that. Imagine actually knowing someone and knowing like, you know, if, if I take this area of my life really seriously, yep. I really want to meet the right partner for me. That's why I like to take things slow. And I know myself, once I get intimate, I get connected. Hmm. And here's the other side of it, guys. If you move physically too soon, especially for women, hmm. we have blinders on because all that oxytocin is flowing, um, you know, epinephrine, and we've got things happening. And it is said that there's, there's research and science around this, that our blinders can be on for a year and a half to two, up to maybe two and a half years, but I think it's year and a half to two years on average. And here's the things he could have blazing red flags <laughs> you don't see them because you're in this love yeah. bubble mm. and you know i i say this follow your heart but take your brain with you yeah. love is never enough mm. that feeling is never enough mm. it, i think it really takes communication you know like like what a what a powerful start to the relationship of saying, Mm -hmm. here's where I am. Here's what I'm committed to. Here's what I'm looking for in my life, you know, and, and for the man to be able to communicate effectively and, you know, we'll like the track record of the relationship will show if he actually is in integrity with what he said, which I think, you know, that could be a whole different ball of wax, so to speak, but, um, up, up front, like, Hey dude, what are you looking for right now in your life? What's a priority for you? Is your work a priority? Is finding someone a priority? Are you are you feeling lonely, you know, like what is going on in your world? Here's where I'm at as a woman, you know, here are the standards that I have. Here's my my um pacing, ideal pacing for a relationship. I want to take things slow. I want to get to know people. You're not the only one. I want to communicate that up up front. Like I'm talking to, like meeting friends. I don't know if you'd say it that way. You probably have better finesse on that. But um, you know, like I I am in the just wanting to get great relationships and great friendships. So I just want you to know that's where I see you right now. And I'm not looking to like move fast on a a romantic relationship and and jump into bed. I'm, I'm really wanting to build like a sustainable long-term um, relationship and friendships. And my priority, number one, I think to communicate, communicate up front is me. Like I want to be happy. I want to be fulfilled. I want to make sure my life is working great and be um, great on my own. 
And then if once I'm doing that, then I'm willing to share that with someone else. Then I'm willing to invite someone else who's also feeling great and happy and loving their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is normally discussed on a first or second meeting. Yeah. You know? and, and, and what came up for me as you were sharing that yeah. is a lot of times women will get fearful that mm. she's going to scare a guy away by mm. sharing that. Wow. And good. <laughs> you scare him away. He yes. wasn't the right one. Yes. And, you know, there are fun, flirtatious ways of sure. saying it. So a man will actually feel safe yeah. because not everybody has done their personal development to the extent that Chris has or, you know, or the next person. Right. So, right. you know, like Chris, that would work really well for you. If a woman was like, okay, here's where I'm at. This is when, you know, this is what's important to me. Take it or leave it. <laughs> you want to continue getting to know me or not? Yes. That would work really well. So you got to read your audience too. Yeah. yeah. So it's about you know women are super intuitive, mm. and we question ourselves a lot because we've had you know if you've had past heartbreaks, mm. which who hasn't? Um, if you haven't, lucky you. Um, but. And we'll use that trepidation, but instead, mm -hmm. like getting really, when you're clear on what you want, you're more in your power around your dating. Yeah. So read your audience. Gosh, you know, like, so are you, do you still believe in the dream? Mm -hmm. And ask the question like that and then zip it, ladies. This is important because a lot of times women, we like to talk and we interrupt each other and we're like, you know, have you ever been to a lunch or dinner with a bunch of women? We literally will interrupt each other, talk about something else, come back to the other subject. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. You were saying this. Mm -hmm. We do it. We don't lose one another, but men get lost quick mm -hmm. on that because they're they're single focused. Yeah. So let him share because he will. He'll be really, really honest unless he's a massive sociopath or narcissist. Seriously. Um, <laughs> Seriously. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. But, it's another 60 minutes. <laughs> Another six. We'll do that next time. <laughs> so it's it's that that yeah. you know you know or you know are you do you ever see yourself married? Mm. Yeah. Just open that up Boom. and don't make any assumptions. Don't create a story around it. And he might be like, oh well, you know, I'm. I'm really enjoying dating right now and getting to know people. I mean, I liked being married. Let's just say, you know, he'd been married in the past or, or even if he hadn't, but you know, I'm really enjoying this. I, you know, I don't, maybe, maybe in five years, believe him. Don't <laughs> think in your mind, if you've got a timeline, because I know women mm -hmm. will put on this timeline of, I need to have babies. Mm -hmm. And if, if it's if he's not there in a line, there are plenty of men that are. Um, so believing in that abundance is part of that manifestation piece. Um, yeah. So so having that communication, and then um, you know, women will. Uh, this is another thing that I encounter with my clients or women in general is they'll say you know, they'll tell a man, well, I'm dating, I'm getting to know other people because this is important to me. I want to take my time. And some men won't like that. Mm. So they'll be like, well, I only like to get to know one person at a time because it could be, you know, they might threatening. They might feel threatened or maybe they're a little old fashioned or yeah. you know, there's, there's all of that. So read your audience and and then say, gosh, I, I do really understand that and, and can appreciate where you're coming from. 
and I'm really enjoying getting to know you. Mm. And I'm not there yet. So if you'd like to continue getting to know me, I love it. I feel a really great connection. So it lets him know, hey, this is where I'm at and you're setting a boundary. Mm. So don't, don't do, don't commit before you're ready. Right. Because, and, because he said, this is what I need yeah. for this to work. And, um, um, and typically this is on the first or second date. Mm -hmm. And if a man gets really huffy puffy with you about that, mm -hmm. he's, he might be a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good opportunity. And typically they will exit mm -hmm. because they're realizing, oh, I can't get what I want yeah. as easily with her. Yeah. And they'll yeah. find someone else that they can't. I want to dive into uh, getting a man to commit to a woman, right? A woman who's listening right now. She wants the man to commit to her. What would that take? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Another um, loaded question. <laughs> it's a loaded question because it's different yes. for, for everyone. Um, you know, the thing is, is that... Um, Deed abundantly until the right yep. man you off the bar market. I mean, that's my first answer to yep. that. Yep. And set up times in your week where you're taking space to date. Like, let's say it's Tuesday, Thursday night, right? And those are my nights that I I do my my first meet and greets or whatever. Maybe it's lunchtime. Whatever that is for you. And let's just say that you don't have a date on Tuesday night then go do something mm -hmm. for you or something that you would do yeah. with a potential partner so mm -hmm. how to get him to commit i i digressed I love it. Um, but that's number one number two um pacing him and and not moving too fast that makes him actually desire you more Yep. Because it builds what I call tension. And a lot of love experts talk about this. I'm not the only one. Um, it builds tension. So tension is, in, and you feel it, right? When you're getting to know someone or even in a relationship, you feel tension, that polarity. So you're not spending quite as much time as he might want you to. So he's always kind of like, well, well wait. Um, <laughs> And this is not a game. It's it's like it's really honoring you. Yeah. And it's it's you know like don't yeah. It's it's not being it's not being frivolous. It's not toying with him. Mm -hmm. I think playfulness is good, right? Like like I think the game concept is it's important to have fun and enjoy yourself. And don't do this to like do some kind of power play, right? To be to be in control yeah. and like be stringing someone along. No, it's like be authentic. Say this is this is like from my heart. I just want to, I want you to know this is what what is required for my life and what I'm committed to and things like that. Yeah, exactly. And and here's the thing: um, if you've been dating someone that you feel a really great connection with for. A few months and he hasn't really brought up the commitment so and I'm assuming that you're following my formula and you're not intimate yet um I was just about to say before I was like well don't you know don't stay the night over at his house and then hang out all day right <laughs> because again I mean it's it it it, it takes away the polarity yeah so again, so l let's assume that this is happening and every situation can be a little bit different. So if he hasn't brought up commitment and you feel a really great connection with them and you're dating other people still, there's nothing wrong with actually bringing it up. Like, and, and saying it in a way that invites him to open up mm -hmm. because men, and I'm 
pretty sure that you might agree with me on this. Men really want to be vulnerable too, but they need to feel safe with you Mm -hmm. to do that. Mm-hmm. And part of that is giving him the space to speak and giving him the space to desire commitment with you. So if you have been dating for a couple months and it's like, how do you think things are going with us? He's like, great, like, awesome. And you want to take your agenda out of your mind because mm-hmm. that's a big thing for us women, like, we'll have an agenda. I want to be here with this. Da, mm-hmm. da, da. Try to take your your agenda and, and throw it out. And you also want and desire a loving, committed relationship that leads here. Yep. You know, I remember when we first met, you know, you said you would, you, you're really looking for a committed relationship eventually that leads towards marriage. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, we haven't really discussed commitment. Um, I'm curious, where are you at with that? Um, Because I'm definitely looking for something real and I feel really connected to you. And I I don't laugh with anybody else the way that I laugh with you or something like that. Um, I also do something that's called an appreciation sandwich where you you do, you know, the appreciation sandwich, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. So where you put something positive in, then you ask for your need, like mm-hmm. what's happening or the thing that might be a little tougher to talk about. And then you end it with something that you're grateful for about him. Mm-hmm. So when you say that, you then zip it mm-hmm. and you smile. <laughs> <laughs> You got to, you got to listen. That listening part is, is so important to really be receptive. And like you said, with the safe space to feel vulnerable, it's so important that men feel that and they're able to be their, their true selves. This is, this is so powerful. And I, I swear we could keep going on this, Cindy. We got to bring you back on again and have another conversation. This is awesome. You could, you could say something like, I want to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. Or, you know, because a man could have a great connection with you. And not see himself marrying you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if that happens as often with women, but it, and that can be hard because he could be like, oh, I'm really attracted to her, but he may not see that. Mm. There's reasons for that. So oh, I could talk about. Um, <laughs> I think the the yeah. best thing to do, like the tactics, you you have so much, you have so much of this conversation, how to say these different things. I've seen it come out. And so like role playing that with you, Cindy, I think would be one of the most valuable things mm-hmm. that I've heard so far in this conversation of how can a woman really show up as her most powerful, authentic, real, loving, not attached self to have a man fall in love with her, right? Not needing him to fall in love with her, but hey, if if we're going to create this this really this love that lasts, create our own love, our own luck in love, here's how we can go about it. So, again, I know we've only scratched the surface, but I want to tell our audience how they can stay connected with you, what can they do next to to find out more and keep growing themselves and attract yeah, the love of their yeah. life. Well, you can go to my site, um create your own luck in love. Beautiful. And you can also sign up and get my ebooks, How to Meet Your Soulmate in 30 Days or Less, really effective um, along the lines of what we're talking about. Even if you don't meet them in 30 days, it's really, really good information. Um, I like to put a qualifier around that. <laughs> How to- it's not a legal guarantee. <laughs> I can guarantee it. It has um, Take Time for Your Love Life is another ebook that I wrote because I found that to be really important. Also, too, um, for, you know, if you're feeling called to discuss your love life a little bit further or, you know, dive in deeper and get some support, um, sign up for a complimentary call with me. And it says 30 minutes complimentary, but just put where you saw me and then I'll make sure that we we extend that to an hour so that you get some really good coaching around your next steps in your love life. So awesome. You are the bomb, Cindy. Cindy Olin, again, go to www.createyourownluckinlove and you spell Cindy C-Y-N-D-I. 
O L I N Olin and Cindy, you're you're a blessing, massive, massive empowerment for women, especially and men, to have an amazing love in their mm-hmm. life. So thank you for everything you're doing. It's so so beautiful, and thank you for sharing with our audience and like really giving us some practical stuff, some uh, energetic manifestation stuff. It was it was awesome. So thank you. You are welcome. Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun and. And I really hope that we served a lot of people and, and they got some, some great things that they can take away and, you know, bring into their love life today. Absolutely. They definitely did, Cindy. I appreciate you. And we'll see you. I'm sure you will be back on this marathon. We, we, we just scratched the surface. So thank yeah. you for being here and have an amazing rest of your day. Okay. You too. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>